Do you need an S? Chances are, you're a lot like me. You've got a lot of stuff you want to store on your computer, but you don't really have enough places to store it. And just how good are you at backing everything up? If one of your hard drives fails, is the data on that safe and secure? There are a few different ways around this problem. You can just simply invest in more drives for more storage, or of course you can invest in services like Google Drive or OneDrive and places like that and keep everything on the cloud where it's easily accessible from any device. But both of these have some problems. So what about a NAS or network attached storage? Essentially what it is, is just a very small unit that you put somewhere in your home. You connect it to your home network and then it can be accessed from any device on your network quickly and easily. You can do things like assign a drive letter in Windows or of course on Mac. So you can just use it as if it was a normal hard drive, but then you've got some added benefits, things like it being able to support redundancy. So you can have multiple hard drives that will store the same amount of data. So if a hard drive fails, it's available on the other one. And you can quickly and easily add more storage at any time, toolessly and without having to worry about opening up your PC tower. But are they any good and are they worth investing in? Well, using a NAS comes with a load of benefits. Having a centralized amount of storage that everyone in the home can access is actually insanely useful. If you've got multiple devices and multiple computers, then they can all work on the same sorts of things at the same time. Your music library is available everywhere in your home. And if you create a file on your computer upstairs, someone on their laptop downstairs can then finish it off without relying on a pen drive to move stuff from place to place. But it's not just physically saving you time, NASes can be a lot quicker than other solutions as well. Assuming you put in there fast hard drives, then it's going to be quicker than using a smaller portable hard drive. And regardless of what drives you go for, assuming it's connected to your network properly, it's going to be much, much quicker than using something like Google Drive because you won't be relying on the internet, you'll just be relying on your home network speed. Especially if you're using Cat5 Ethernet cable, it's going to be a lot, lot quicker. And even those of you using Wi-Fi, it still will probably be a lot quicker than uploading and downloading files from the cloud. But setting up a NAS is actually fairly straightforward. If you don't really know what you're doing or you're not that confident, you can buy a NAS that comes pre-installed with hard drives and is ready to go. Or you can do what I did, which is get one from Asus Tor that kindly lent this one out for a few months. And then you just stick in some blank hard drives. So here I've got some from Seagate. And these ones are actually NAS drives. They're IronWolf uh, four terabyte drives, and they're properly rated for 24 hour access. So they should be a lot more secure than just buying some cheap, nasty hard drives that may well break um, after a few months time. The NAS that I've got here also configured itself by default in RAID 1, which keeps everything nice and secure. But of course, if you want to go for something else, if you don't want to have that redundancy, or if you want to go for a different sort of RAID that has more redundancy, then the options are going to depend entirely on the NAS you go for and it will require a little bit of research before you set it up. But regardless, there are definitely plenty of flexibility options so that you can set everything up just the way you want to. So this is the NAS setup that I've been using for the last few months. And my workflow is pretty much just a case of grab my footage, put it on my computer, render the video, and then offload it somewhere else and then back up onto the NAS. And before I didn't really have a way of doing this. I mean, I was using these horrible, nasty things um, portable hard drives, which obviously they do a very good job of what they do, but they're not secure, you can lose it, and if it fails, all the data on it is gone. So having a NAS here does give you the peace of mind uh, that your data is just that little bit safer, but of course it's not going to save you from everything, and if you have a natural disaster, um, then your footage is definitely uh, sadly gone. There are a few other things to mention though when it comes to NASes and a few problems. Mainly being that while you can game on a normal hard drive and you can game on a portable hard drive, gaming on a NAS is a little bit more tricky as while you can definitely grab the files, put them there and you'll have the latency and the uh, read and write speeds to use it without issue. Some applications, so things like Steam and Origin, they don't like NASes. So if you try and select uh, the, network, uh, the network area as your a sort of save location so when you download a game it goes there. Steam just doesn't let you do this at all and I think you can do it in Origin but then it just plays up and doesn't actually install and it's it's pretty much 
you'll have to get quite a large workaround to actually get games to run properly on a NAS, which isn't ideal, and going for a different solution is probably going to make more sense for you. Another issue, and perhaps the biggest issue, is actually the cost to get into NASs. They are very, very expensive, especially the ones like we've got here with a load of high-end features. Obviously, if you don't need something like a MySQL server or a web server or all of these things, um, then you can go for a cheaper NAS. Um, but it's still having to buy the hard drives that is really expensive. And all in all, I think this solution is well over the £500 mark, which is definitely going to put a lot of people off. Especially bearing in mind that because we've gone for redundancy with a RAID 1 array, which keeps uh, the data on both hard drives at the same time, it means that you've got to buy twice the amount of storage for the same amount of storage, which is actually uh, quite annoying, and it's not something that everyone will be able to wrap their heads around immediately. But assuming you can get past those problems, there really are a load of advantages just to having storage that everyone in the home can access and having fast storage that's by no means limited by having to have uh, the device to hand, having to have um, a USB socket free on your system. Having it neatly wired into your system and just grabbing a new computer means that immediately you're up and running. You don't need to copy anything across, just simply map the network drive and then you're using it as if um, it was any other computer. And it really can be a massive help to productivity or just if you're someone that does have multiple devices and you want to watch video or music around the house, then it really is very, very useful and it definitely is worth considering. So then, NASes. They're not perfect one-box solutions that will do everything. You're still going to need an off-site backup, but they are really useful bits of kit. And for someone like me that does work with either raw images or video files, just uploading them to cloud services wouldn't be an option, and it would cost way too much money even if it was. So having the flexibility to decide how much storage I need and having it always accessible is really, really useful. Obviously, it's not for everyone. If you don't have that much data, then using something like Google uh, Drive or something like that is going to be fine. And you can even get free services that will have all the storage you'll need. If you're just taking JPEGs from a compact camera, then chances are you won't need much more than this. But for anyone that really does have a form of workflow, that really does have a lot of data that they regularly need to manipulate and work with, but still keep that little bit more secure, then a NAS is a great option for you. But yeah, let me know down below, are NASs useful to you? Do you have one? Or do you think there's something I missed from this video that you want to know more about? Leave them down there in the comments section below. And as I say, a massive thank you to Asus for loaning this ASUS Tor, uh, I think that's how you pronounce it, ASUS Tor, uh, NAS out. And thanks to Seagate as well for loaning out those drives. Like I say, any questions down below, subscribe for more videos just like this. Like the video if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't. And I'll see you in the next one.